Welcome to the beginner's guide for the Division 2 in 2023. So far, I have taken you through your first steps into DC all the way to Endgame, and I have explained Endgame for you. This video is part of a five-part beginner's guide series, and the playlist is linked down below in the video description. So today's video is for those people that may not have as much time as others. How can you speed up the process of Endgame? Because there's a lot to do. If you watched the last video, you'd see how much time I've put into this game, and not everybody can do that. So we're going to be discussing ways that you can shorten the length of time needed to complete all of Endgame and complete the most difficult content that Division 2 has to offer. Last time out in our end game guide, we went over the recalibration station. I explained how all of this works and how your library works, how optimization works and how expertise works. And if you've got stuck into this, you may have realized just how long this grind is. Like for example, if you make builds and you put builds together and you want all max rolls on them to get the most out of that build, you'll notice that there's a ton of resources required in order to do that. Now you can get pieces as good as you want, but there's always going to be that piece that needs a, needs a little bit of optimization and optimizing all your builds can take a while on top of that once you've optimized your builds you've got to expertise them we've got to level up items we've got to make them proficient and then you've got 21 levels in which you can upgrade that weapon or gear piece this is going to improve that weapon or gear piece and to get the true amount out of your build you're going to want to max expertise everything and again this is such a long grind so what can we do to shorten this grind for players that don't have that amount of time to put into the game? Well, for this, we can go back to our watch and using one of the in-game mechanics to speed things up. Again, in my last video for the end-game guide, I explained that when you get into end-game, one of your first priorities is going to be to get to watch level 1000. This is going to enable you to max out your watch so you've got all the max attributes there, and also it'll give you 200 scavenging points for doing that. And it's scavenging where we want to look at. Scavenging points can be used to give yourself currency, ceramics, polycarbonate, steel, carbon fiber, electronics, titanium, printer filaments, shade calibration, and field recon data. These materials are the materials that you use when you're optimizing builds, and they are also the materials that you use when you're using the expertise station. If we take a quick look at the expertise menu, you can see here that I am expertise level 15 and to get max level, I need to make all 351 items in the game proficient. Once fully proficient, I'll be level 21 and any item then can be upgraded to a maximum of level 21. So what does this mean? We did touch on this in the last video. If I go to my weapons here and we go to my ACR, you can see here that it's currently proficient, but I haven't upgraded it yet. Now, if I upgrade it, which I can do now because I've got the resources to do so, this will upgrade it to level one. Now, with any weapon in the game, by upgrading its expertise level, you're going to gain weapon damage. So a level one expertise assault rifle or any other weapon is going to give you 1% weapon damage. And because my expertise level will be at 21 once everything is proficient, I can expertise this weapon all the way up to level 21, giving me 21% weapon damage in total. Now the thing is, as we keep on upgrading this, it's going to require more and more resources. And this is where the strategy that I'm going to teach you today is going to come in handy. And back to these materials that you can use scavenging points from your watch level on. These are the materials that you're mostly going to be using on this expertise menu. The same with the optimization as well. So you can see here that I've got a nice amount of materials. And the way that you're meant to do this is farm the game. You know, play missions, play different modes, dismantle gear or whatnot. And it can take a long time to get these values that I've got here. And I'm talking weeks of gameplay. And the worst part about it is when you do start putting this into optimization or the expertise menu and expertise and items, these materials go very, very quickly. So for weeks and weeks of work, literally within an hour, these will all be gone. Now, not only are you using these materials to expertise your weapons up to the expertise level that you are, 
but you can also use these materials to make proficient items that you haven't done yet. And a lot of my items I haven't done is skills because I just don't use them. So let's have a look at this sticky bomb. You can see here that it's not even proficient yet. I got to go through the first 10 levels of proficiency before I can expertise it. Well, if I press L2 for donation materials, you can see that I can use these materials to level it up. And one of the best ways to do this, in all honesty, is printer filament because it costs the least to rank it up. As I keep on donating filament or other materials that I have, I can make this item proficient without even using it. Again, you're going to go through your materials very quickly doing this, but it is a great way to get your expertise level up and maxed out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend all of these resources that I've got on that expertise station and we're going to see how high I can get my level. Sticking with skills, I was able to make proficient all of my sticky bombs and all of my trap variations. But you'll see that I was only able to make it to expertise level 16 with all of those materials that I had. That was all I was able to do. And on top of that, I've spent through all those materials that I had. I had a lot of materials there and they are gone. It took weeks and weeks of grinding to get those materials that high. And I've got to start again now just for that little bit that I was able to do on the expertise station. Shade calibration and recon field data there haven't been touched because they're not used for expertise. But these are what you'll use on the optimization if you're optimizing builds. And they do go just as quick. So now I'm going to explain a tip to you on how you can get all of those materials back or most of them very, very quickly. And it's highly going to depend on what watch level you are on. So in the last video, I advise that you get to watch level 1000 as soon as you can. But don't stop there. You want to get your watch level as high as possible. Keep on playing the game, grind out materials naturally, and just do what you can. You can see my watch level at the minute is 3842, and the higher watch level, the better. Now, I wouldn't really recommend doing this method until you have a high enough watch level, and that's up to you to determine. And I'll explain how it works now. So as I've already said, at watch level 1000, you fill out all of these nodes, but they, they only take 800 of your watch levels. The other 200 watch levels will go on scavenging. And with these scavenging points, you see I have 223 to spend here. I can use them to just give myself some extra materials. So we can spend some here, say we'll spend 20. We can spend another 20 here if we want to, and so on and so on. So with these scavenging points, we're basically refilling the materials that we've just used. Those scavenging points will be used up very, very quickly. And with just 200 or so, you're not going to get the max materials that are on offer. However, if you've got other characters, the watch level works to your advantage. Everything I've shown you so far is on my main character. I'm now going to head over to my secondary character. And if we head over to their watch, you'll notice that you share the same watch. I'm shade level 3842, just like my other character. And that watch level is account wide. That'll be the same on any character that you create, unless it's a hardcore character. If ever you start a hardcore game, you will have to start a watch level zero. And it's kind of like a separate account. But anyway, that is separate. You'll notice here I've got another 241 scavenging points that I have not yet spent and I can use these to furthermore get myself some more materials and invest in these. So with the 200 or so levels of my main character and the 200 or so levels on my second character that I had, I've got myself a nice chunk of materials back. It's nowhere near what it was, but I could then go and spend these again to go and improve my expertise level, say, or get some items leveled up. So heading back to my expertise menu now and carrying on with my skills, we're going to see if we can improve any of my pulses. And with the extra materials that I got there, I was able to fully proficient one more pulse. So we've done quite a little bit of work there for the amount of materials that we had and for the about 500 levels we had across both characters in the scavenging. But now I have no more scavenging points to make. Now, how the watch level works after level 1000, because you can't fill out any more nodes because they're all complete for every watch level you gain it'll always go into scavenging so what we could do now is we could just go and farm hundreds and hundreds of levels to get these scavenging points back up while we're doing that we're naturally going to get materials and resources and then we'll also be able to spend these scavenging points to get even more 
But as I said earlier, to max all of these out, that is going to take weeks of playtime. Unless you could play this game 24 hours a day, even then it's going to take you probably a week or more. You're not going to max these out anytime soon. Now, obviously, if you have more than two characters, you can do the same again. Your third character should have some scavenging points and your fourth character should have some scavenging points. But eventually, you're going to run out of them and you're going to have to grind. At this point, this method comes into play. What you can always do is keep one spare character slot because you only have four that you can use in total, but always keep it free. And to do that, if you need to, delete a character. This fourth agent here, I'm just going to delete to create a space. And what this does, it enables you to start a new agent. And we're going to fully take advantage now of how the watch level works across your account and separate characters. All you have to do is start a new game and you don't want to go through the main campaign. You just want to go through the expansion, Warlords of New York. Now, depending on how you do this, if you just play it solo and go through it quickly, it can take anywhere up to like three or four hours. Uh, but to speed things up, you can invite a friend in who's a higher level than you just to go through the content really, really quick. And if you want to get very fast, you can invite a whole team in, have people going in different directions, completing different objectives to get this done in around about an hour. It really is up to you but this is really really quick from like anywhere between one and four hours you'll get to the end of the warlords of new york campaign and for your fourth or third or second character whichever one this is you're gonna get your watch so just progress through the warlords of new york campaign complete all of the manhunt get to level 40 and beat aaron keener at the end of the cutscene and once you get back to haven you'll be given keener's watch and you'll go through the tutorial again with the tutorial complete, you'll gain access to the watch. And as explained earlier in this video, the watch is account wide. You'll notice my shade level is 3,842 and I've got a ton of points to spend. Because I'm over watch level 100, I can max out each node on this watch right away. And any leftover points are all added to my scavenging. So I've got a total of 3,042 points to spend on scavenging. This is why I advise you to get to the highest shade level possible. If you've only got a shade level of 1000, this 3042 points would have only been 200. And you saw earlier what 200 points get you. It might not be worth the grind. But that's for you to decide yourself. Now, as I said earlier, I'd say anything around about 1500 watch level plus would be worth this. It takes one to four hours, depending on how you do it, to get through Warlords of New York. And compared to how much time, it would take you to like farm these resources of what these points are going to give you. This feels like a cheat code, honestly. Now, before you spend these points on your watch, there is something else you're going to want to do. Head back to DC and you want to visit Ainyara. She is going to be selling account shared blueprints and account shared materials. Make sure you buy both of these and you buy them on all of your characters. All this means is self-explanatory, really. You're going to share all of your materials and blueprints across all of your characters. And what this means is it doesn't matter what character you're signed in on. As long as you've got your materials, you can come to recalibration station and you can work on weapons under the expertise or optimization, depending on what build you want to work on. And that's important because with this character, we're just going to use this as a watch mule and we're only ever going to use it to go into the watch and refresh our materials when needed. So with that 3042 points now, I'm able to go into these materials and practically max them out as much as I can. I was pretty much able to max out each of these materials and I've still got 280 points spare. So you can see again why a higher watch level is more valuable when you're doing this method. And if you don't have such a high watch level, it's still worth it, of course. But I'd focus on things like printer filament, because if you are doing the expertise, say, where you're going to be using it to make things proficient, printer filament is the cheapest one to use on that. So max this out, use this, max it out again, use it again, and so on, just to be more efficient. And if I go back over to one of my other main characters and head to my watch, on the scavenging, you can see that the materials I've transferred because of that blueprint that I've bought. So now what I can do is head back over to the recalibration station and work on whatever I want to work on, whether that's optimizing builds or expertise with all of those materials to hand. You can also go to the crafting station 
because you know when you're doing optimization it's different materials that you use you can use your materials to craft optimization resources as well so going back to my skills now on the expertise i'm gonna see how much more i can get proficient and all i was able to do was the rest of my pulses i did some turrets some hives and i ran out of resources on chem launcher from earlier on i didn't even go up an expertise level that just shows how much of a grind this is if you want to use resources to work on your expertise but it is the quickest way to do it again imagine how long it would take to grind out all those resources just farming naturally it would take weeks just in a couple of hours i was able to do that and get some expertise work done and now this is done i can go back to my watch me all character delete them and then start a new agent again to do it all over this is by far the best way and the quickest way to work on optimizing builds and work on your expertise in endgame on the division 2 and it's very ideal for people that don't have as much time to put into the game as others do so you have a choice you can do this or you can work on it naturally either way you're gonna have to play the game and get your watch level high to make full advantage out of this but that's the end of this video i hope you have enjoyed this beginner's guide don't forget to go and check out the other be beginner guides that i've got down in the video description under the playlist and until next time thank you for watching this don't forget to hit like share and subscribe to support and until next time thank you for watching stay safe and peace out